Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the week. We are at CES 2020 right now, and the show's about to start, but we're starting off with a pre-show news show, because there's still a lot to talk about that won't be in discussion otherwise. For example, Samsung's one minute long power outage that could cost the, money, the, the company millions of dollars in damaged wafers. EVGA's SR3 dark motherboard is up for discussion again. Coolbits has an icebox immersion system that should be fun to talk about for alternative cooling solutions. Rumors about AMD, rumors about Nvidia, and the dismissal of some of those. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's Tough RAM RGB memory, available from 3000 megahertz up to 4400 megahertz in eight gigabyte by two configurations. The Thermaltake Tough RAM uses 10 addressable RGB LEDs for bright illumination and comes in both black and white kits of memory. Learn more at the link in the description below. So we'll be at the show all week, of course. Check back on the channel regularly. We'll have multiple uploads a day. We typically do three or four or more than that for each day, especially the first few days. A lot of cool case company stuff to talk about this year. There's some silicon products we'll be talking about as well. But before all that, Samsung's power outage made the news for, this is the second time in recent history that a power outage has massively affected wafer production and supply for a memory manufacturer. Recent reports from Yonhap News indicate that Samsung suffered a power outage at its fab in Hwasyeon, South Korea. Uh, feel free to leave your criticism of my pronunciation in the comment section below. The fab produces NAND and DRAM for memory and the disruption in the power brought production of both to a full halt. The outage was determined to be the fault of a transmission cable exploding at a nearby substation that subsequently rendered the fab without power for about one minute. Samsung has reported that the downtime would last two to three days, and as of writing, there is no indication of how many wafers were lost due to the disruption in production. However, Yonhap reports that the damage is expected to be in the few billion won range. The incident is likely to be relatively minor overall compared to other power outages in the past. For example, in 2018, there was a power outage that Samsung suffered at its Piontek facility, resulting in 60,000 damaged wafers which for comparison was about a $43.3 million loss for the company, USD for that one. And this also comes at a time when there's already discussion of NAND and memory prices going up for 2020. So the memory prices we've had finally in our favor for once for a year, those look like they're gonna go back up now. This is at the start of that too. Uh, also one more comment, when researching for the story, we noticed a lot of the internet comments were about how why don't they just have generators? Takes a little bit more than a gas generator you'd have in your home to keep a multi-billion dollar fabrication plant running. So I'm sure they would have thought of that by now if it were that simple. Next one, EVGA's SR3 dark motherboard is finally available for $1,800. $2,000 asking price with a $200 rebate just to knock 10% off for you. The SR3 dark motherboard's finally available for the few of you who still want one at this point. Not to say the motherboard's bad. It's very unfortunate actually that the motherboard's quite good and EVGA spent a lot of time on it but it launched at probably the least opportune time possible because the 3175X, while exciting when it launched, now has competition from Threadripper and it's quite substantial competition. We recently did a revisit of the 3175X and in almost all of our test scenarios, it was extremely difficult to justify. There were a few where it did really well, where AMD was more memory bandwidth bound, but otherwise the SR3 should be available and you probably don't have to rush to buy it because it'll probably be around for a bit since 3175X sales are going to bottleneck it more than anything else. It's the problem with depending on a partner to make your product sell. The SR3 Dark will combat only two other motherboards supporting Intel Xeon W3175X, the Asus ROG Dominus Extreme, and Gigabyte C621 Aorus Extreme. Intel Xeon W3175X is based on Skylake SP silicon, and as such uses the LGA3647 socket, a socket that not only requires a special motherboard, but also a special cooling uh, solutions. For example, the Asetek 690LX PN is a $400 solution, which is way more than what it should cost. It also runs something like 70 dBA at 20 inches distance. It's horrifically loud. EK's EK Annihilator Pro water blocks are actually really good for it, but expensive. Honestly, there are probably more water blocks at this point for these things than there are actual CPUs or motherboards in existence, but you've got options if you wanted them and you should go uh, definitely custom water. This one though is a C622 chipset, so it's a bit newer version than what Gigabyte and Asus are running. Doesn't change how effective the CPU is though. 
Next one, Coolbits and the Icebox full immersion system that was shown at a recent supercomputer conference. Anantech was on hand at the annual supercomputing trade show where an interesting product from Coolbits was spotted. Coolbits focuses on immersion cooling and the company showed off its Icebox 5 Sys1 fully immersed gaming system. Question mark after the gaming there. Per Anantech's reporting, the Icebox 5 Sys1 is a single phase system that comes in a complete kit that includes a tank, a pump, radiator, fans, and five gallons of EC120 coolant. The system is rated for loads up to 750 watts, and the display system the company showed reportedly used a 2990WX, hence the question mark after gaming, and an RTX 2080 Ti peaking at 618 watts. The liquid temperature was reported to be 30 degrees Celsius with the system under full load via Anantech's article, and the full kit will set you back $2,450. For those interested, Anantech's Ian Cutris recently discussed the two-phase immersion liquid cooling in a separate article that's well worth the read. Check our show notes linked below to go check out their, uh, their articles on that. Next one is a rumor, Navi 21 GPU, allegedly twice the size of Navi 10. This is not one we have independently verified. Recent rumors regarding the die size for Big Navi or Navi 21 have pointed towards a 2x increase in the size. Some of the internet speculation has jumped from two times size equals two times performance. Probably be a little careful with that kind of speculation because one, baseless, and two, that's often not the case, if ever. Uh, Navi 21 purportedly boasts a die size of 505 millimeters squared versus 251 millimeters squared for the existing Navi GPUs in the 5000 series, that'd be Navi, Navi 10. Navi 21 will be built on a, allegedly built on a second generation RDNA architecture. We might hear about this more this week in the next couple of days from AMD, which is why I'm, I'm not really providing any opinion on this right now. We'll wait and see on that, but uh, should be a second generation seven nanometer plus process node, if so, from TSMC still. And specifically, it would be at the N7 Plus process from TSMC. This is the same process node that will underpin Zen 3, which we might hear more about this week. That's been in the news a lot as well. And then there's also support for GDDR6 memory, which has been standard at this point. Uh, there's been mention of AMD using the latest HBM2E memory for these cards, but it seems unlikely for consumer grade cards, perhaps for a Radeon 7 counterpart in the professional space. And for the rest, well, we'll see. We'll just wait a couple days and see what happens. Next one, Zotac is finally going to offer mini PCs with AMD Ryzen processors. Zotac actually has had some pretty good mini PCs in the past that we've covered, and they just, they've all been Intel up until now. So some of you may remember when Zotac showed off its MA551 mini PC that boasted support for Ryzen's Raven Ridge APUs. The MA551 was shown off at both CES 2018 and Computex 2018, but it never materialized in the US market. Two years later, Zotac is again trotting out SKUs that will both support Andy's Ryzen CPU and supposedly come to market. We'll see. At any rate, Zotac's new Zbox MA621 Nano and Zbox CA621 Nano are set to be Zotac's first Ryzen-powered mini PCs available in the US. Both SKUs will come with AMD's embedded Ryzen 3 3200U processor that features Vega 3 graphics. And the biggest difference between the two SKUs is that the MA621 Nano will be actively cooled and uh, the CA621 will be passively cooled. Otherwise, the systems appear to have similar specs two so dim slots for memory, for example, one two and a half inch drive bay, one 2242 M.2 slot, uh, 802.11 AC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and we'll know once CES proper is underway. And then a couple quick ones. I, I had this section at the end that I called small stories and non-stories. One of the smaller stories was AMD doing more seven nanometer volume than Apple. Uh, a couple of things here. Apple's moving to five nanometer, so duh. And, uh, that's why AMD is doing more volume on 7 nanometer with TSMC than Apple is now, because they're moving ahead. Not that that's a bad thing that they're doing a lot of volume, but it's probably a, it's a bit big of a jump for the people who are so, so pro AMD right now that they kind of lose sight that Apple does, what was it, a billion dollars in a week last year was one of their highest weeks. Anyway, Nvidia, Ampere, 50% better at half the power. This is another one that's gone a bit off the rails. So 50% better at half the power is such a tremendous jump that it's actually not believable and probably not possible. More likely what this means, the headlines for this, probably really what it means is 50% better in some specific aspect at half the power, maybe ray tracing on RT cores, for example. Typically when Nvidia leaks come out about stuff like that, that's what it's referring to. It's some specific aspect element of the GPU where it's better in lower power, not the entire thing because rasterization performance is at 50% 
increase with 50% power reduction. Once you scale it back to 100% power, i.e. same as now, uh, it starts to get uh, not realistic. The 3980X, this is one of the small stories, 48 core CPU that's supposed to exist under Threadripper. We'll learn more later. 5600 XT, Thick 2 Pro Staging is a card that will exist and it has marketing like newly enhanced open air design. You're welcome world and XFX. That was uh, us when we found out that the worst thing about their Thick card was all of the plastic around the ventilation that made it bad. So it looks like that might be improved. We'll test it and find out. And I need to get to the Thick 3 at some point, maybe after CES. And also it said 100% copper GPU and memory heatsink again. You're welcome. That's it for this one. Check back for the rest of CES coverage. Subscribe for all of that, or you can go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. It's getting very dark now. So uh, we will see you all next time.